Alright guys, welcome back to another video. This video is more of a training video that is aimed at apprentices and people that are just learning in the trade. So what I'm, what I'm going to show you, a lot of people will already know this, I get that, it's more for the people that don't know it. So there was a time where I didn't know this. So basically, this is a Dakin and about a week ago it was showing a U4 fault, so a communication fault. Then for some reason it started working again without me being here. Anyway, I'm going to show you how I diagnose a communication fault on a Dakin. So I'm going to explain it and go through it with you for this video. Just before I do, I just want to quickly explain something that I think is beneficial. When I was younger, I worked for a company and I just went and did maintenance on air conditioners for, for like two years. I go to a lot of people's houses and do maintenance. They weren't inverters, they were just old carrier DOLs. And um, anyway, at the time, I didn't think much of it and I didn't think it was that beneficial. But now that I'm older, I actually think that was very beneficial because I saw how healthy running units look in regards to like the pressures, pipe temperatures, superheat, etc. Um, and now whenever I come across units, because I had those two years where I just saw a lot of units running healthy, I have something to compare it to. So my advice for young people coming up in the trade is when you get sent out to a job to install one of these or any air conditioner with your boss, once the job is done, I do what I'm about to do here, I'll show you, and just see how new units, healthy units run. So when the time comes that you get sent out to diagnose a faulty one, you have something to compare it against. So that's my advice. Um, take it or leave it. But anyway, I'm going to take the cover off and show you how I diagnose or um, find out the communication side of things. So let's get to it. The first thing, I'll just take off this cover. Beautiful. Let's put that somewhere. I'm not going to step on it. Right, so in here, you have on the bottom terminals line, neutral, earth, and then on the top you have one, which is line two which is neutral and three which is a communication cable so one and two sends line and neutral to the indoor unit number three sends communication pulses to the indoor unit all right so i've just set the multimeter up and i'll, I'll show you so in between uh, line and neutral it'll have the 240 volts so it's power coming in and one and two it's the exact same terminal it just sends that to the indoor unit that's all it does now if you put your multimeter between three and two there's no voltage there it, it's not doing anything the indoor unit is currently in the off state. So when I tested that, I just had the black common prong number two, because that is a neutral, the red on three, because that's what we're testing. So what will happen is when you turn the isolator on for the after like the unit has been off, so when you turn the, the actual main power on for the first time, you'll register a spike between two and three of 240 volts, which I'll show you.
right now for the purpose of just showing you this i've just got don't worry about this i've just put my black prong in the in the number two which is a neutral and i've got the red prong in the number three which is the communication don't worry how they're just sitting there i've just put them in i'm just doing this so i can hold the camera and turn the isolator on so basically all i've done just just to be completely clear nothing's changed i've just got the prong on number two the black one the red prong on number three the isolator is off so there is zero volts i'm going to turn the isolator on right now i'm going to leave the camera here Right, so what you just saw there I'll explain what those numbers are doing in a second but what you just all right what you just saw there was I had the black prong on number two the red prong on number three and when you turn the power on for the first time so i literally just turned the isolator on and you just saw with your own eyes you get a spike of 240 volts that is completely normal and then after that it will just start communicating at a lesser voltage which i'll explain now okay so as you just saw when i turned the isolator on for the very first time it sent a spike of 240 volts AC across two and three. That is normal, that is good. Now, after that, the voltages will just do weird stuff, don't worry about that, and then it'll just go back to zero. And it'll remain at zero until you run the unit. When you run the unit, two and three will talk to each other, and it'll fluctuate between 10 and 50 volts DC. So just to recap, when you turn the power on, the main power on for the first time, between two and three, you'll have a spike of 240 volts AC, which you just saw, that's normal. And when you're running it, it'll fluctuate between two and three, between 10 and 50 volts DC. So it just talks to each other. That's the indoor board and the outdoor board talking to each other. And I'll show you that right now. I've gone and turned it on. It's running. And um, yeah, now I'm gonna show you that in a uh, real world experience. Like this isn't some edited video. This is just me out on the field showing you how they, how they work. So let me show you. Right, so now I'm gonna put it to DC. I'm gonna get my prongs. If I can do it one-handed, you can do it two-handed on the field. Um, so, in between two and three. Um, I'm going to actually need another hand to show you what I do. Um, let me set up the camera, one sec. Alright, so the reason why I needed a second pair of hands is because of this. So, what I do is... It's on DC, put it on two, put it on three. I'll hold that there with one hand. You can see it's fluctuating. So what you do is you press min max and that's just gonna register the minimum and the maximum. So as you can see, it says the max is 45. You press it again, it says the minimum is 9.7. That's all you need to know. It does tell you the average, but you don't need to know that. So, let me show you that again. Just the apprentices. Min max, it's gonna record it. 
the max is 45 volts DC the min is 9.7 so like I said this when it's running should be between 10 and 50 volts roughly and that's DC and that's just fluctuating up and down and it's the indoor and the outdoor board communicating with each other that's all it's doing so the lower end the lower end is from the indoor unit and the upper end is from the outdoor unit so that's a healthy unit and um, you have a U4 fault you can test this this did have a U4 fault it doesn't anymore so it's just rectified itself I don't know why I wasn't here so I can't really go into it anymore but now you know you can test this so easy so quickly on every install you do that's what it should be doing when you come to a unit that's got a um, U4 or any communication fault if it doesn't have that then you know the boards are cooked so that's simple as that just to recap when you turn it on it's going to have 240 volt spike between two and three and then when it's run and then after that spike it'll um just start like fluctuating um the voltage and then eventually just go to zero as you saw and then um it'll stay at zero until you turn it on and when you turn it on then it'll start talking to each other and um that's when you can put on the dc and measure between 10 and 50 volts dc for the sake of this video i'm just going to show you a completely different unit it's still a dakin but it's a different model this is a cora and i'll just do the exact same thing Was 44 volts DC, the high, and the low was 9.5. It's basically the same on this. Totally different. This is a Cora, not a L series. The high was 45 volts DC, the low was 9.5. So it's basically the exact same. All right, so that's it, folks. There we have it. That is how you diagnose or find out if the two PC boards are communicating with each other so like I said I recommend just you know when you do an install with your boss or whatever just you know get your multimeter out um, and just see what see what the voltage voltages are like this is an example why if you like read the like literature you're like, all right, yeah, it should be fluctuating between 10 and 50 volts DC. That's just like what they write. The real world experience, as you saw, it actually is, it gets below 10. You know, it's like 9.5 volts DC on the lower end, for example. And then it's 45 on the higher end. And you're like, if you didn't know that that's fine... And we know that's fine because I just showed you on two different units. That's how it works on a healthy unit. If, if you if you don't know what it runs on a healthy unit, when you go to diagnose a faulty one, you have no contrast. You don't know. So you, you, you could like see that it's like fine out on the field on your first service call and you'll be like, oh, it is a little bit lower than what it says in the textbook. Throw the textbook away. Just get out there. Invest in a good fluke multimeter. And just start like just test uh testing stuff after installs that's what i reckon so that's my advice anyway like i said take it or leave it i hope this has helped some people um yeah so that's it the next training video will be me showing you how to use a daikin or oh, sorry how to use an inverter checker on a daikin so anyway that's it, and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.